Okay, so let's move on to the next part, which is attention line. Attention line helps a letter get to who it needs to get to. Now in your email, you usually just have a to. In a letter, you can add an attention line, but you can also do this inside of your email, where you're actually saying that I'm sending this letter to, but I want it to go extra to a specific person. So let me just give you a quick example. It's a little bit hard to understand, right? So let's say I have a inquiry or a sales letter and I want to try to get the attention of someone inside of a company. So I can send this letter to the marketing department, let's say. But inside the marketing department, department there is a person named Ms. Smith. So Ms. Smith is the person I want this to get to, but I'm going to send it to the marketing department. So what happens? This letter will go to the marketing department, but it will be attention, Ms. Smith. Now, what does that mean in reality? It's a very good uh, thing to understand is that this letter goes to the marketing department. Anyone there can open it and begin to work on it, and then they will pass it on to Ms. Smith. But if you wrote your letter to Ms. Smith, and what if Ms. Smith is busy? No one can open that except her. What if Ms. Smith has left the company, or maybe she's taken a vacation? Now your letter must wait for her to come back, maybe two weeks or three weeks. That's not a way to do business. So a much better approach is we send the letter to something bigger, like the whole company or a department, and then we say to a person. But if that person is not there, that person is busy or something has happened, then someone else inside that to can open and address the letter, take care of the letter. So let me go over that one more time. Let's say that we're sending this to the marketing department and attention Ms. Smith. So who can open it? Anyone here. What if Miss Smith is not in the company anymore or what if Miss Smith is on vacation? No problem. Anyone inside the marketing department can open it. What if Miss Smith is there and she's okay and she's not busy today? They will pass it on to her right away and she will respond to it. So you can see the way we write the attention line is like this, but you can see up here is who is this letter to? So in this case, is a great example, it's going to this whole company. Someone in the company needs to open this letter. Who? Anyone. I don't really care who. But I do know that I want the letter to go to Greg Rogers eventually. I want it to get to him. If he's not there, someone else please take care of this letter. Let's take another example here. This is a, a, a somewhat different example, a little bit more general. So here, this is to. And then we have the address. So this is the address of the receiver. And then down here we have the attention line. So in the two, it's the whole company. This whole company I'm sending it to. That sounds strange, but you can do that. Here I'm sending it to a department. I'm not sending it to a person. I'm sending it just to a department. What does that mean? That means that if I send it to the wrong department, or maybe I got the name wrong, or maybe this department was closed last week, that's okay because anyone else in the company can now open my letter. Or someone in the company will open the letter and what will they do? They will send it over to the marketing department right away. So that's a great example of how to write a really good business address. You send it to a bigger level and address to a smaller level usually a person. So let's take a look at what happens next in the opening. We have the salutation. So the salutation is what you've seen many times before. Something like dear somebody. So an important thing to remember is, we're going to talk about it in a little bit, is this colon here. So this is a colon, right? A colon are two dots. But an English colon is different from a Chinese colon. So you need to be very careful this colon has no space before it and one space after it. So you can see here, no space before the colon, one space after the colon. Dear sir, gentlemen. Now maybe you've seen often people use a comma here. So they say, dear Mr. Smith. And then they use a comma. That's a different way to write that. We're going to stick with the colon 
and I'm gonna show you why in a moment. So here are people you know, like Dear Ms. Roberts, right? I know this person's name. Uh, Mrs., Ms., and Ms. Of course, you probably learned this in a junior high school or high school that these mean different things in English, right? One means married, one means single, and one means we don't know or we don't care. These days, we try to just stick with the Ms. because it's not important whether a person is married or not, right? So just use Ms. if you don't know any more information. That's the best way. Of course, if they prefer to use Mrs., like when somebody sends you a letter, if they sign the letter and they say Mrs. Smith, MRS, then when you write a letter back, an email back, you should always say Mrs. Smith. Don't do something different. It might make them a little bit offended. Of course, sometimes you don't know the person, and that would be something like this, dear madam or dear ladies, a group of ladies, dear madam, madamesses, madams, madams, yes, madams. So you can become more formal or less formal, but it really is important to have this. Lots of people write their emails and they don't include this salutation at all. I often receive emails and they don't have my name there at all. How do I even know that you know who I am, right? And you may think, well, today email were very informal. Well, the reason for doing this is not to be formal. The reason for doing this is to know that I'm not getting junk mail, that you're not wasting my time, that you know who I am. And it's always going to pay off for you to be formal in business. You're never going to lose something by being formal. So we have many different ways we can do this. If it's addressed to one person or two people, or it can be addressed to an organization like here, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. And sometimes you don't know who it's to. In that case, we can say, to whom it may concern. We like, I have no idea who's gonna get this. I don't know who they are. But I can say, to whom it may concern. So these are great ways, and your QBL program has many examples to help you.